A reading from Mark chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. Jesus went out again beside the lake. The whole crowd gathered around him, and he taught them. As he was walking along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me, and he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Joyce. So that was in the second chapter of Mark's gospel. Luke picks up with a similar beginning of this next passage, which starts in Luke 15, the first verse. Then he adds a parable. And, but he's speaking here as he is um, in, uh, in Mark's gospel to the uh, Pharisees, which you will recall the Pharisees were a sect of Jewish religious authorities who favored a fairly strict interpretation of the law. Now, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost and finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who need no repentance. May God bless our understanding of these scriptures. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Why raising sheep is fun courtesy of the 4-H Club. Your lamb will recognize you and know it's you and it's feeding time and be very happy to see you. Shearing a lamb in front of an audience is fun. Walking a lamb every day after school is relaxing. And keeping yourself dry while washing a lamb is impossible. I love watching the 4-H kids and their animals when we go to the country fairs like the ones up the road in Bethlehem and, and Goshen, Connecticut. They're so proud of their animals. They work so hard and they're kind of clean scrubbed and they're just very inspiring to watch. And maybe when we think of shepherds in the Bible, we might think of those little ceramic figurines that we put in the nativity scene in the creche at Christmas. And they look so, so clean and so innocent and well, angelic. But herding sheep in biblical times was a whole lot dirtier, dustier and smellier and more dangerous. When a sheep went missing, a predator or a a bandit might have been involved, and a shepherd who lost a sheep at night might have to go out looking for it in very dangerous terrain. I kind of doubt if shepherds in the first century Galilee thought that walking their sheep after school was fun. Sheep were valuable and the work was tough. So when 
Jesus says to the tax collectors, sinners and Pharisees, which of you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that's lost until he finds it? I wonder what kind of crazy math is that? Who would risk the lives of 99 sheep for the one? Now the parable right after this that Jesus tells to the same audience puts it another way. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. When she's found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me for I have found the coin that was lost. So a parable is a comparison of two things using like or as, and sometimes these analogies work better than others. At least she doesn't leave the other nine coins to the wolves while she finds the one. And then following these two parables in Luke's chapter 15, we have the parable of all parables, the prodigal son. Do you think maybe the parable of the lost sheep was just kind of a warm up act to that headliner? But actually, there is something maybe equally interesting going on in this passage than as, as interesting as God's dubious arithmetic. As with many, many Bible passages and with life often, the key is in the context. And so we read, now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him and the Pharisees and scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. Sinners, according to the Pharisees, were people who disobeyed or didn't take seriously enough the Jewish religious laws. And in fact, eating with sinners was a violation of one of those laws. In the gospels, the Pharisees are always grumbling about sinners. So Jesus tells him this short parable, but his real point may not be in the parable itself, but in its sly conclusion. Just so, he says, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who have no need of repentance. Why would heaven not rejoice more over 99 people who have no need of repentance? Because Luke, the author of this gospel, is really big on repentance. And Luke says that everyone needs to repent of their sins in order to be forgiven and saved. Other gospels don't necessarily say that, but that's Luke's very strong opinion. Everyone needs to repent of their sins in order to be forgiven and saved. And that includes, we presume, the Pharisees. The 99 who need no repentance do not exist. And Jesus is putting the Pharisees in their place again. Score another one for Jesus. So... If the 99 who need no repentance don't exist, the next logical conclusion is this, we are all sinners and we are all the lost sheep. That might not be a very comfortable thought. We, not, we may not particularly like being lost or compared to sheep and certainly not being called sinners. Many preachers don't even use the S word anymore because it can make some people feel bad and we don't really want to bum people out. But sin, which is often defined as separation from God, if sin is defined that way, then we are surely always indeed sinners and lost sheep. 
some times in our lives we're more lost than others. But the bad news is that we're sinners. Then the good news is that God does not sit by or wait for us to return. God searches us out, just like that shepherd. God searches us out. And when God finds us, God throws a party. And the reunion is celebrated with joy no less than in heaven. God searches for us. From Psalm 139, we read, Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You search my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. From the prophet Ezekiel, God says, I myself will be the shepherd and I will make them lie down and I will seek the lost and bring back the strayed. I will seek the lost. And then again, from the 19th chapter of Luke, the son of man came to seek out and to save the lost. Maybe you've been feeling a little lost lately, or maybe you're doing pretty well, but you should remember the times when you felt that way. Just know that you're not alone. We are all lost sheep some of the time. And God seeks us out not to berate us or to punish us for being such a bother, but to lift us up and put us on God's shoulder and carry us gently back home. Does the lost sheep deserve such love and gentleness and care? Of course not, of course not. But that's grace, isn't it? That is God's amazing grace, unearned, unearnable, and undeniably sweet. And grace is truly God's crazy math. When we want to think that the sum of all of our good intentions and good deeds should earn us a place of honor in heaven, Jesus reminds us that the people who think they have no need of repentance are not the honored guests there. And when we fear that each sin, each creation of separation from God subtracts from our worth in God's eyes. Then Jesus reminds us that God is ready to lift us up, carry us and rejoice with the angels at the most beautiful celebration imaginable. Imagine that. Maybe. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul and guides my path in righteousness for his name's sake. Surely goodness and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Though I walk through the valley 
of the shadow of death. I will not fear, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cups over flowing surely goodness and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever the lord is my shepherd i shall not